Hey everybody, this is Carl from CarlSapsky.com here with another tutorials uh, for Python. If you want to check out my other tutorials, head over to CarlSapsky.com where you can view my Python and HTML tutorials for now. So today we're going to be focusing on Python arrays. Now all this basically is, is a bunch of characters joined together in a string in an ordered sequence or in an as ascending order. So over here, what I've shown you is the word hello. Now over beneath it, I put the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are effectively the values that are assigned to each letter in the ascending order. So H has been given the number 0, because that's the start of the, set of, of the string. E has been given 1, 2, and 3 have been given L and L, and 4 has been given O. So similarly in this piece of text here, uh, you get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the space would be 5, W6, O7, and all the way up to the end of the string. So if you were to put this into practice, the first thing we can try and do is to try to pick out certain characters from this entire uh, string. To do this, all we have to do is type in print, open brackets, sentence, 1, and then in square brackets, we're going to put the value that we want. So, for example, I'm going to put in the value of uh, 12. Now, if I were to go file, run module, and OK, uh, what I've done here is I've got to close the brackets, and it will definitely run now. So it's come up with a space. So this character here is what it's picked out. To make life easier for yourself, uh, for this tutorial, I'll make it number 8. And I'll run the module again. So here we go. I've got the letter R, which is this letter here. Now we can make this a bit more interesting by saying, let's say I wanted only the letters E, L, and L from here. So I can do this by putting 1 colon 4. Now the colon is basically telling you I want everything after the after the uh, from one all the way up to three, and I want to cut out at four. So I don't want any of this, and I don't want any of this. I only want E, L, and L is what it's, what I'm pretty much asking it. So if I were to go ahead and run this, it'll come up with E, L, L. So all it's doing is simply cutting out everything before number one, uh, before the first number, and everything from the fourth number onwards. So this is, like I said, this you're literally just slicing uh, parts out of the text. Now, what we can do is, if we were to delete this, instead of just picking out individual words, we can actually make a whole new sentence from this sentence using the characters in there. So I'm going to just go and press paste because I just made this earlier. And over here, I've got sentence two. So I've, re I've made a new variable, but I'm using, the very, I'm using the letters and numbers assigned from here. Now I'm going to print out sentence two and I'm going to see how it comes out. And the word and the word that the three words that come out saying it is hot. So all this is so the fifteen is the I, which would be here or here. Thirteen would be the S. So uh, the I is here, the S is here. Then I put two speech marks. Now this all this indicates is the fact that I'll be using. All this indicates is that the two speech marks are a spacebar. And then similarly continuing on until the very end. So 13 is T, and therefore it prints out this is hot, or it is hot, sorry. Now, the next thing we can do is if you've been watching my other videos, I've shown you pretty much how we can change this to, or how we can use different variables and how we can use the if statement, the else statement, and the elif statement. So First of all, let's say we wanted to make a simple yes or no question. So we can have a 
a variable and call this question. And the question is going to be give it a variable of here is my variable. Do you agree? Question mark. Now, all we're going to do here is we can use a if statement, else statement, or we can use an if and else statement, an elif statement, or we can start using loops. Loops are much more interesting, so I'm going to start directly with them. So we can go ahead and we can say whilst or while uh, question, and I'm going to put this value as zero dot lower and all this is pretty much saying is whatever variable or whatever value I give to this it will convert it into a lower text format so while this value is not so we can say question mark equal to so it's not equal to and then in single quotation marks why so we're going to say yes and question zero so this is the value of the question variable dot lower is not equal to n. Then what we can do is we can say that question question is equal to the input of yes or no question mark end this end the speech mark and then end the brackets now we can use the if statement so we can say if um if question zero question square brackets zero dot lower is equivalent to y so as long as as long as we have the letter y uh, then we wanted to print out a statement. Uh, oops. One thing you must realize, if it's Y, then when you print it, it should, it should come out here. So you should have the correct indentation or you will get indentation errors. So then we wanted to print out something along the lines of you chose the answer. Yes. Otherwise, so this is where the elif statement comes in. So we can say elif, the question we're asking of the value of zero um, dot lower is equivalent to no uh, colon. Then we wanted to print out something else. So we'll just say you wanted me to print out no and then we can end the speech marks and end this so now let's go ahead and run this so save your document and I will just restart it quickly okay so it says yes or no so if I go ahead and say yes and it says you chose the answer yes now since the answer is yes so while it's all true, it's going to print out everything and then it's going to end. However, if I were to say no, then it would do the same thing. Now, another way we can do this, uh, we can make this again slightly more interesting. We can go ahead and use different kinds of Okay, uh, we can, yeah, we can go ahead and use different kinds of uh, variables and we can you assign these to different characters. Something you must realize is if you were to take out the question variable and run it, the immediate thing that you'll get is a, uh, is a error. This is because we've not assigned the question any data. Again, if you were to remove this completely and run it, it says that the question is not defined because we simply have not given the variable, we've not declared the variable of um, question. So let's go ahead and put the variable back in. So question and is going to equal to the, um, is going to be equal to the string 
Hello world. This is Joe blog here. And we're going to do something else, which is very, very like this, but we're going to just change this while loop slightly. So over here, what we're going to do is we are going to type in instead to find the uh, to find the uh, to find um, just the letter Y or just the letter N instead of having to type in yes or no. Uh, so what we can do is we can use the while loop. So we can say while. And then we can use a bracket and we can say while the uh, question is not equal to and then we can have two speech marks and then we can close this or the question uh, in square bracket zero dot lower is not equal to uh, wherever not equal to y in single quotation marks and question zero uh, question dot lower is not um is not equal to n now we can rerun this so then assuming it's true it will rerun the loop as well so we can go run, save the module, and it's going to say invalid syntax because uh, I've opened up a bracket here and I didn't close the bracket here. So it's a bit confused as to what I'm doing. Now if I run the module, it'll come up yes or no. If I just put in yes, you chose the answer yes. If I put in no, you wanted me to print out no. If I just put in y, N capital Y, it won't make a difference. So this is just simply a different way that we can write it. Uh, if you have any questions for me, you can either uh, message me on my website at carlshypte.com, you can leave me an email, or you can simply leave me a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching. This is Carl from carlshypte.com.